Welcome to Customer Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ben Walters, and today we're joined by GEP, who provide global supply chain and logistics. Let's get started. We are GEP, a global company of procurement and supply chain experts. We work with the world's largest and most complex companies across all industries to solve some of their most pressing problems. Today, companies have to deal with greater uncertainty, more complex risks, and unexpected changes at a frequency and speed far higher than ever before. And when all business operations happen in software, the company's ability to respond to change can depend entirely on limits imposed by their existing technology. Combining strategic consulting with state-of-the-art software and a full managed services portfolio, we at GEP help forward-thinking businesses re-engineer their procurement and supply chain operations with a new digitally powered vision. The GEP software environment includes GEP Smart for procurement and purchasing operations, GEP Next for supply chain management, and GEP Click which enables the connection of critical legacy systems. GEP Minerva is the AI powering the whole platform. GEP Software then is the operating system for procurement and supply chain for the next generation of businesses. So I'm here with Nithin Prasad, Principal Engineer from GEP. Nithin, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Ben. Now, running a global supply chain, you obviously have a number of systems that are key to running your business. But we're here to talk about GEP Next. Can you share with everyone what GEP Next is and how it helps your customers? Oh yeah, sure. So um, as you've seen in the introduction video, GEP uh, software itself is an end-to-end -end solution for your procurement optimization and supply chain capabilities in one. If you probably view the um, supply chain world itself from a 50,000 foot view, um, you would bifurcate the entire product or the services itself into two different parts. One's called direct material and one's called indirect material itself, right? Say for example, for the chair that you have in your room, uh, say it's what's bought by a company or you bought it from a company called ABC Furniture, right? So ABC Furniture itself um, would need some product products and services that they would need to build that particular chair. They would need foam, they would need, um, say, um, the cushions, the dyes and colors, and laptops, pens, pads, and stuff like that, right? The products and services that directly impact your production line are called as direct material products. That's something like your chemicals and foams that are actually on your chair. And the supporting services like your laptops, pens, pads, and stuff, these are called indirect materials itself, right? So GEP software is a culmination of different product lines um, in itself. And uh, our two biggest product lines are GEP Smart and GEP Next. GEP itself was in the indirect space for a long time with GEP Smart. And we have big brand names, uh, Fortune 50 customers that you can see on our website. So it was actually our customers who came back and told us, uh, you guys are doing really well on the procurement optimization space, why don't you guys venture into the supply chain space as well? And how? That's how GP Next was born, right? So GP Next is a one-stop solution for all your supply chain uh, management capabilities. And along with GP Smart is the world's only end-to-end -end procurement and supply chain management software in one. So with this concept of having everything in a single place, we actually help our customers in real time where uh, our customers manufacture with different product businesses like pharmaceuticals, uh, we're talking about uh, oil and gas, textile. Uh, we even have customers who are in the food and beverages business as well. So it's really providing that global supply chain platform for your customers for all of those things that maybe we don't really consider when we're thinking about the products that we, that we buy day to day. Can you share a little bit about how you architected the solution and how some of the services that are within Azure make this possible? Because we are in the supply chain business itself, we have real world impact for our customers, right? And uh, GP Nexus architecture is built for resiliency and scalability as the core DNA of what we are basically doing. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples and probably you can relate to that. Imagine yourself as a supervisor in an oil rig off the Gulf of Mexico, right? You and your crew of say seven members have uh, drilled say 100 barrels of oil in the last week or so, right? Now you want to pay your team saying, hey guys, you've done a really good job. Now this is your money, go spend it, right? Using the GP Nexus field service application, you can quickly open it up on your tablet, on your mobile application, on the rig itself, process the field tickets, process the invoices within five minutes. And by the time your team is actually on shore, they have money in their bank. 
It's good, right? So the earlier process was that you would have to come on shore, process those field tickets, process those invoices, and it used to take close to six to eight weeks to pay your team itself, right? So this is something that we have seen as an improvement from the legacy system, and GPNX is able to solve that problem uh, for our customers. Another example is, say, you're in a chemical plant, a huge million square foot plant or a warehouse that you're in. You're the supervisor for the entire plant. Uh, you have a chemical shipment that's coming in and you would like to know where do you want to put it in your warehouse along with the other segments that are there. What you would do, quickly open up a laptop, go into GPNX, uh, get to the inventory visibility portal, and in real time, you would be able to know where you can put your particular product along with the inbound and outbound transactions for that particular piece uh, in real time itself. I have tons of examples like this. I can keep going on. The architecture for GPNX itself, we have built our architecture on a true microservices um, strategies is how we like to call it. So from our UI layer to our orchestration layer to our data layer, everything combined is an individually deployable piece in the puzzle, right? You can go deploy at any point in time without any impact for any of our customers. We actually use Azure Front Door and Azure CDN services, uh, wherein we are actually piggybacking on top of your global distribution of 52 data centers for our web components, so that in any case, uh, if there is a failure in one particular region, you automatically are switching over to the others as well. And we do something similar for our AKS or our orchestration services as well, wherein we use Azure Kubernetes services inbuilt multi-zone redundant capabilities uh, for deploying our applications at any point in time with scale and with resiliency in our mind. So we know resiliency is obviously really important to GEP, especially given the global nature of the business you run. Can you share how you're using Azure Availability Zones to help architect your high availability and how this really helps reduce the downtime when you're faced with a failover situation? Oh yeah, sure. So um, as I was talking about the real world impact that GPNX has for our customers, it's actually pretty important for us to make sure that in GPNX we do not cause any disruption for our customers. So uh, there are different levels of failover or disaster recovery that we have designed our resiliency for. I'll start with level zero. So level zero is at the subscription level, wherein you have a separate separate disaster recovery uh, set up to be a replica of your primary region itself. Say the scale of impact is your entire East Coast region is down, uh, using our homegrown detection system to identify and to initiate an auto failover mechanism, we are actually able to make sure that there is zero downtime in case of that big of an impact as well. If you come a little bit down to level one, wherein we use our AKS or Azure Kubernetes services inbuilt uh, node pools, uh, inside the node pools as well, we have a multi-zone availability uh, concept that's available inside the cluster itself. So you have your primary node pool and your secondary node pool sitting in different places across the globe, right? Say your primary node pool itself is down and within the cluster itself, you're automatically able to fail over to the secondary availability zone for that particular node pool. I'll come a little bit down to the level two, uh, where probably I'll wear my engineering hat for some time. So inside the cluster, um, a specific container is actually catered by something called as a pod and a service. They run in tandem to execute that particular container and the container actually contains the business logic that is executed for that particular microservice that is there, right? So with resilient architecture and zero downtime strategies like a blue green deployment or uh, rolling updates that we have enabled on that particular cluster, in case if there is a pod down or a service that is particularly down at that moment in time, using these strategies, we are actually able to recover within the cluster wherein you have a replica of that pod automatically created by Kubernetes. And using this concept also, we have been able to achieve independent deployments on a live environment wherein you can go deploy to that particular production environment at any point in day without causing any downtime for our customers. That's really impressive and, and just great to see that you've managed to take advantage on those different levels of ways to kind of help that failover and really kind of you know, make that a resilient architecture. Now, I imagine that you know, throughout the process of setting up GP Next and, and architecting this solution, there are probably some really great lessons that you've learned along the way. Can you share some of those with the viewers and, and people who are potentially looking to create a similar application of their own? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, this brings in a lot of memories. In today's 5G-enabled smartphone world, right? Um, everyone likes to have instant gratification. Um, it's as good as you know you opening up your smartphone, going to a Play Store, and downloading the application that you want. Customers also would like to 
give us their features as soon as possible for them, right? Um, it's similar in that lines. So using Azure DevOps, we actually solved that problem. And that was one of the lessons learned that we had picked up from our legacy system. Say, for example, you have your feature code that's available in your feature branch right now. You can go from dev to production, include and this journey of from your development environment to your production environment covers your continuous integration, your static code analysis, your performance testing, dynamic scan testing for security, static scan testing, code quality testing, uh, integration tests, smoke tests, and stuff like that. Everything included, you can go from dev to production within 60 minutes. Previous system, we used to do the entire process within two weeks. We were actually able to bring it down to under 60 minutes using the independent deployment concept in tandem with our zero downtime strategies that are available on the Kubernetes services from dev to production. So that was one lesson learned uh, that our customers really appreciated that we were able to give their features as soon as possible. The second lesson learned is that the legacy system that we have, the web traffic route changes that we wanted to do for our customers was actually a manual process and we did not have a UI to do that. With the previous system, we had to log into a particular VM, make changes to the configuration file. This was a manual process. So it is error prone. There might be someone who didn't do it properly and then you have downtime for that particular route in that customer, right? We went ahead and utilized Azure front door and API management services on Azure. And using as a combination for this, we are actually able to do route changes on production in real time. And without any impact for our customers, it automatically spreads that particular changes across the globe within five minutes or so, right? Uh, we also realized one more thing. Because we have this gatekeeper kind of a service um, that is the front-ending service for us, we also wanted to have security on top of it to block any kind of malicious attacks uh, at the web traffic level itself. And with Azure Front Door's rule-based mechanism, we were actually able to do that. These were probably the two biggest lessons that we've learned uh, with our journey with GPNX. With these changes, we have seen tremendous improvement in our CSAT scores. Our customers are really happy with what we're doing. That reflects in our uh, scores as well. Some really, really great lessons there and some, some really great, I guess, insights too for others who are looking to take on a similar approach. Nathan, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. It's been great to hear your story. Sure, thank you very much, Ben, for having me. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about GEP Next, or if you want to learn more about how to set up your own Azure High Availability Zones, you can follow the links on screen now to Microsoft Learn to get all of the free training resources. Of course, if you want to share your own story on Customer Tech Talks, you can email us at cttalk at microsoft.com to get started. Thanks again, and we look forward to seeing you on the next Customer Tech Talks. Right.